Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Engineering News Senior Deputy Editor Keith Campbell recently attended the Airbus Innovation Days 2014 media briefing in Toulouse, France. He joins me in studio to discuss the highlights. Hi Keith. So can you please discuss some of the challenges that are currently facing Airbus in the wider industry? I think the challenges facing Airbus are pretty much the same as for the whole of the commercial aviation uh, manufacturing industry. The biggest one is probably the continuing growth in air traffic. The number of uh, passengers, airline passengers today, is twice what it was 15 years ago and is almost certainly going to be twice what it is today 15 years in the future. So the number of passengers is going up dramatically, but they can't increase the number of airliners the, the, uh, the same way. Uh, passenger traffic may be going up 100% in the next 15 years, but they certainly can't increase the number of airliners flying around the world by 100% in the next 15 years. There's simply no room for them. So this is one of the factors driving bigger and bigger airplanes in all segments. You know, uh, narrow body planes, have been stretched and accommodate more passengers than they did 15, 20 years ago. Uh, wide body planes are, have been stretched and new designs have been brought in to uh, have capacity for more passengers. Most obviously and most outstandingly the A380 Super Jumbo. And one of the interesting things that Airbus has picked up is that a number of the customer airlines are now considering increasing the number of passengers they accommodate in their A380s because the or original operators have not uh, remotely sought to operate these planes at maximum theoretical capacity. Uh, and they're not, still not planning to think, uh, thinking of operating them at maximum theoretical capacity, but they are thinking seriously of increasing the capacity a bit over what it currently is. Um, other challenges, uh, the number of new programs is getting fewer and fewer, and the gap between them is getting longer and longer. The uh, latest uh, Airbus commercial airline project, of course, is the A350XWB, uh, which hopefully will achieve certification later this year and uh, enter revenue service before the end of the year. Now, after the AW, we already have the A380, uh, the A3WX, uh, the A350XWB, and on the narrow body front, they are re-engineering the A320 family with what they call the A320 new engine option, NEO. Now, put all these together and there's no real need for Airbus to develop a brand new design aircraft uh, for many years to come. There's also the A330 wide body, uh, which they're now beginning to study a new engine option in that as well. Uh, originally, they thought that the A350XWB would eclipse the A330. It hasn't, and it looks like the new design and the older design are going to be manufactured in parallel. Uh, addressing uh, different niches of the wide body market. So they are considering re-engineering the A330. Some of the airlines have asked for that. Uh, re-engineering a plane is not these days a simple thing. Uh, it uh, has all sorts of um, interesting uh, consequences to do with aerodynamics because uh, in airliners today, you're trying to squeeze out every fraction of improved performance you can get. So you just don't bung new engines onto uh, a wing. You have to see the aerodynamic uh, interaction between the new wing and the cell, uh, the new engine, the cell, and the wing, and refine maybe uh, elements of the wing design and so on. So it's, it, these are not easy things to do, uh, but they're not in the scale of designing a totally new airplane. And there's also the question of introducing modern technology innovations in the manufacturing process. In the old days, 
uh, Airbus would make an advance in manufacturing technologies when it developed a new airplane. Now it has to bring in new manufacturing technologies incrementally on existing airplane production lines. And going back to increasing the capacity of the airliner, what exactly do you mean by that? Would that include increasing the number of um, seats on the plane? Oh yes, yes. It, it, it means getting more people in the plane. Um, the which Airbus is hoping will be achieved without reduction of passenger comfort. Uh, the uh, but b basically uh, more people have to be put in uh, the aircraft in order to accommodate um, the increasing demand while dealing with the problem of limited airport capacity. Uh, as I said, this is why planes are getting bigger and bigger. Uh, it, it's co it's actually made worse because 93% of all people flying today fly to or from or via just 42 cities on Earth. 93% of passengers go to, from, or through just 42 cities. So we're not talking about global airport capacity. We're talking about uh, airport capacity at today, 42 cities. Now, in another 18 years, uh, Airbus, Airbus defines these 42 cities as mega cities. Uh, the company expects the number of mega cities to be about 83, but that by then 99% of all passengers will be traveling to, from, or via one of these cities. So uh, air transport actually has uh, is focused on a number of what we could call choke points, uh, which magnifies the, the airport capacity pro, pro, uh, problem because air travel is not being spread out evenly all over the world. It is going through these major cities and then fanning out uh, with smaller numbers of passengers to smaller centers across the world. And Airbus launched the Future Factory concept about a year ago. What does this concept entail? Well, this is the Airbus response to the problem, the challenge, if you want, of having to introduce new technologies on existing production lines. Uh, again, the aim is ultimately to increase efficiency, cut costs, and it has various different elements, which are proceeding at different paces. Uh, some are minor innovations that can be introduced quite rapidly. Others are major technological advances which may not uh, be uh, effectively part of the production process for another 15 years or more. It includes various things. Um, uh, one example is uh, what's called additive manufacturing and more prop uh, popularly 3D printing where you use uh, uh, powdered material uh, and lasers uh, to build up parts uh, which can be very complex in shape. Uh, you know, you, you want a, a complex part for an aircraft, you take a block of metal and you have to machine most of the metal away to end up with the part. With additive manufacturing, the part gets built up. Uh, and there's very, very, very little waste indeed, if any, because part of that's not used can be recycled. Now, at the present moment, uh, this works very well with plastic parts, and plastic parts are used in aircraft. They're used for non-structural things. Um, metal parts, the technology is still being developed. I mean, here in South Africa, the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, the National Laser Center is working on 3D uh, printing involving uh, titanium powder. It's a major project. And Airbus uh, is involved in supporting that project. Uh, and uh, Airbus's great rival, Boeing, is also involved in supporting the CSIR on closely related technologies. Neither Boeing nor Airbus see this as an area of competition. Uh, they see this as a, a necessary technical breakthrough for the entire industry. 
So the, their activities are complementary in supporting uh, research and development in South Africa. And of course, research and development is happening elsewhere. Uh, Airbus is doing its own in Europe. Then there are things like uh, increased use of automation. Airbus has been using automation for 20 or more years. They have, they have uh, giant riveting and welding machines on the final assembly lines for their airliners. Um, they, but they're looking to uh, a possibility of increasing automation of future, but they stress the aim is not to get rid of, of the workers, that, the, the, that they use high-skilled workers and that these high-skilled workers are absolutely essential. The idea is to make things improve productivity, reduce costs. And what they are looking at is anthropo anthropomorphic robots. That's robots that look like people, basically, you know, two arms, a head, that sort of thing. Um, and they actually have prototypes that they've developed themselves. They, they see this, these as being used as, they call them cobots, uh, because they are uh, cooperating with the worker, not replacing the worker. And the idea is to use virtual reality or augmented reality te technology. So the, the worker, for example, will wear a headset, and then he will w put his hands and arms through the motions of, say, assemb screwing something. But the actual work will be done by the robot because it will be uh, in a place that will be very awkward for a human to get to or very uh, stressful for a human to get to. The robot will actually do it, but it will be controlled by the worker who will be nearby and watching the whole thing. Um, and other things like use of uh, radio frequency identification and related technologies. So. The workers on the line know exactly where the next parts they need are and can summon them when they require. Uh, and use of automated uh, uh, transport devices to bring them to the right place, to the right workers at the right time, all connected by a uh, wireless uh, communication system. Uh, these are just some of the ideas th uh, they're working on. Uh, as they say, some of these uh, technologies uh, are for tomorrow, some of the day after tomorrow, and some are for definitely years in the future. Uh, but they're hopeful that all of them will be practical and implementable in about 15 years from now. And you mentioned the CSIR. Uh, how is Airbus connected with um, South Africa's scientific community? and? What is the current relationship like? Well, uh, Airbus is involved in supporting research and development and uh, what it calls research and technology uh, with South African universities and with the CSIR. Uh, there are various programs underway um, and have been comp uh, completed in the past. Uh, they vary enormously, research into the behavior, uh, the effect of fuel sloshing and uh, tanks on uh, aerodynamic performance of aircraft, uh, the 3D printing, the titanium powder uh, program, the CSIR, uh, various other programs at the various South African universities. There's also uh, been some cooperative programs uh, with the uh, a traffic Management Agency in South Africa, ATNS, about improving uh, approach to landing and takeoff profiles for aircraft uh, at South African airports, you know, to achieve maximum efficiency and uh, minimum noise and things like that. And there's also been some uh, cooperation with Sasol and biofuels and aviation. So. There's a wide range of cooperation going on uh, involving uh, uh, funding from Airbus, as, uh, technical assistance from Airbus, uh, training from Airbus, uh, contracts from Airbus. So th there's a whole range of, of activities and uh, structures governing these activities. Great. Thanks, Keith. That is the second tech show for this week. 
Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.